Hi. So my name is uh, David Colarusso. I'm formerly a public defender at CPCS. I've moved from the courtroom to behind a computer screen in a peculiar change of events. Um, and I'm now working as a data analyst at the committee. Um, what I'm going to talk to you today about is a programming language that we put together specifically for use by attorneys. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little background on how that came to be. Then I'm going to show you some of the, the resources that you will have after we leave the session here today so you can feel confident that you'll be able to remember how to do things. I'm going to show you some examples, and then we'll open it up for questions at the end and uh, go from there. So uh, a little background. Uh, at the Committee for Public Counsel Services is the Public Defender Agency for Massachusetts. Um, we're a little different than a lot of public defender agencies in that we're statewide. Um, and we don't deal just with uh, criminal cases. So we actually uh, deal with any time there is a liberty interest um, at stake. So we deal with adult criminal cases, with juvenile criminal cases. We deal with civil cases where there is a question of civil commitment. Um, we deal with uh, some family law matters whenever DCF, Department of Children and Families, is involved um, in custody disputes and, and other such things. So we have a, a, a rather broad mandate. And it means that um, when someone comes to our website, they don't know necessarily exactly which of our five different practice areas they're looking for. And so uh, Q&A came out of a need that arose on our website to be able to help solve what I like to talk about as a needle in a haystack problem. And that is you know what the um, – oh, excuse me, we have window washers here, and I don't think there will be a, an issue. Um, in case you hear them interrupt me later. So uh, it was a needle in a haystack problem when you don't know what the needle looks like. And so our old website was a, a collection of PDFs basically. And what you're seeing on the screen now is our new website. And of course, if you um, are interested in finding something and you know what it is, you can just go to our search and you can search for it. Or if you know how our organization is organized, you can go and you can find it through the menus. The problem was it ha it wasn't reasonable for us to expect that our clients would know the difference between our Youth Advocacy Division and our Children and Family Law Division. So we wanted to come up with some way to answer the question, how do we get people to the content they need when they don't actually know what it is they're looking for? And we said, well, in real life what we'd do is we'd talk with them and we'd ask them questions about their situation. And based on their answers, we'd send them wherever they needed to go. And so that has led to this little tool you'll see here um, where it says, what are you looking for? Now, actually, our website is responsive, and one of the main things we wanted to do was make sure that on phones this looked very nice. And so you can see when you shrink down the width of our site, now this becomes front and center. And you can see what are you looking for, and I could say an attorney. And it so are you looking for a specific attorney? If I say yes, it's going to suggest that we go to the directory page, and I can say take me there. And then it takes us to our directory page. And so this is the type of thing that Q&A um, in a very simple way allows you to do. But that doesn't quite give you the full feeling. It just gives you some background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to point out that there are some resources, and everything we're going to talk to about today is available from qnamarkup.org. Um, and that's the site you're seeing right now. Uh, we built this tool internally in the committee. So it was built on the government dime. Um, so a consequence of that is we have open sourced all of our work. So this software is available free of charge for anyone to use. Um, and you can access the tool here at qnamarkup.org. And what we're going to talk about here in a minute is how to actually write some Q&A. But I'm just going to very quickly give you an overview on this editing tool. Here on the left, you'll see a place where you can enter in the text of your Q&A. On the right, you get a preview of what that interaction is going to be. And what I call Q&As are these interactive, they're effectively interactive decision trees. And so let's just look at a quick example. Um, here's an example of one. It probably date me. Um, I'll go ahead and read it out loud here in case your screen is rather small. It says, shall we play a game? Now, I'm imagining that if you weren't muted, I would have heard some laughter there. Um, and it obviously dates me. So I'm going to say no, not right now. I don't want to play a game. And it's going to give me really sad. So shall we play a game? I'll say sure. Now it gets very excited. And oh, I'm going to say, oh, thermonuclear war, that sounds great. And it's asking me 
well, it's saying the only way to win is not to play. Have you actually seen more games? And I can say yes, and it doesn't really believe me. And then eventually if I want to, I'll say, okay, let's play some chess. And then here's a nice game of chess, and I can play chess, and, and that's a fun time. All of that interaction, the looping, the questioning, everything is embodied in this text off here to the left. And actually, um, I'm going to word wrap this here. And that's actually, so now you can actually see all of this text. And that text defines everything we just saw in that interaction of the shall we play a game. Um, those GIFs are just images, and you can see links to them here. But all the text and everything else is encoded there. Um, everything so we're going to talk about. Quick question. Yep. Uh, what, yes. is, what is the platform for this, or what does it take to run? So, this, uh, so what ends up happening is this um, editor you can access on the website. And then eventually what it's going to do is it's going to produce an HTML file that you can take and you can drop on any web server anywhere. Um, or you could even send in an attachment and have it as an email for someone. Um, and we'll get to that, to that output um, in a moment. I just want to sort of show you a little sort of bit of what we can do. And so this should remind you of the tool on our website where it's actually integrated inside a page. Um, in fact, um, here is a set of examples. Um, if you are on the Q&A markup page, you'll see a link to gallery. And that brings you to a set of examples. Um, and actually Mass Legal Help has an example on their site where they have their normal web page and they've embedded off in the right corner um, a bankruptcy uh, aid tool to help um, with people who are interested in filing bankruptcy. So do you live in the United States? Yes. Are you in the middle of a bankruptcy case? No. And then it will ask a set of questions. So what I want to do is convince you that um, even though I might, it might be sort of like trying to drink from a fire hose over the next uh, several minutes as I go through and introduce everything, um, what I want to make you understand is that you can come to qnamarkup.org and you will be able to find there's a video introduction, um, there's this gallery of examples, and then very importantly there's this link that says syntax. And on this syntax page, syntax page, you will find all the instructions you need to do just about anything you can do in Q&A markup. Um, and it only takes, um, if you assume about 180 words per minute, it only takes um, about 20 minutes to read. And, and you can get everything that you need to um, from that page. Um, so if you ever have any questions, you just go to Q&A markup.org and you can find everything you need. Now, Q&A markup is a, a markup language. And for anyone who is familiar with markup languages, what that means is it means you just take a, a stylized bit of text uh, called a tag, and you put it in relationship to some other bit of text, and that relationship causes a computer to then present that text in a specific way. And so on this syntax page, you'll see a collection and a description of all of the tags in Q&A markup and what they do. And so you'll see some of the tags are things like title, and author, and description, and before and after. And in fact, you can ignore these five tags and make almost anything that we're going to talk about today without using those. And there are only 10 tags in all of Q&A markup. What that means is that there are only 10 of these little sort of special words that you need to learn in order to do all the stuff that we've just seen, plus some more. So let's go ahead and, um, and play around a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with some examples. And the examples I'm going to start off with all have to do with flowcharts. So we'll go ahead and we'll start with our first flowchart here. So um, you know, what type of lawyer would I be if I didn't make some uh, Shakespeare reference at some point. Um, so here is the Prince saying, um, and it's a very, very simple flowchart. And so you start and you ask the question, is the wind blowing north by northwest? If yes, the answer is no, yet there is a method in it. If no, the answer is yes. And so if we wanted to capture this flowchart in a Q&A, all we would have to do is write something like this off on the right. Now let's talk about what that is. And what I'm going to do is we'll actually move over to an editor and give it a look. So the two main tags that you really need to understand to use Q&A are the Q tag and the A tag. 
So the Q tag, and I apologize if this is a this might be a little small on people's screens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in here, so maybe it's a little easier for people to see. The Q tag is going to be the question, or really the prompt that the computer is going to give you. The A is your answer. And so whatever I type here in the editor, um, if I go ahead and type something, in fact I'm going to empty this out, and I'm just going to hit Update Outputs, it's going to yell at me and say, well, there's an error. Well, the error is I don't have a Q tag, and I don't have an A tag. So if I go ahead and I add a Q tag, I can say this or that. All right. If I hit Update Outputs, it's still going to yell at me because I don't have any A tags. You can't really have a question and answer session if all you have is a prompt. But if I go ahead and I add in an A for this and an A for that, and I hit Update Outputs, you'll see that I get this or that, and now the options this and that. What's important here is that I'm doing a Q followed by a colon, and then whatever it is I want to show up in that blue box or blue bubble, and then I'm doing an A and a colon, and whatever I want to show up as an option. Now, the reason these get grouped together is because they're vertically aligned. So let's, that's exactly what we saw with our Hamlet example. Is the wind blowing north by northwest? We have, is the wind blowing north by northwest? Question, answer yes answer no, and then you'll see that underneath that, I've hit tab once, and then this question will fire when I hit yes, and this question, uh, the no, when I hit no, the other question will fire. And so I can see that in my example. Is the wind north by northwest? Yes. No uh, is the answer, yet there's method in it. And so you can see that very simply, you can take a very simple flowchart and just by controlling where the Q and A's, which are the two tags we've introduced, are aligned, you can get this interaction. Now, what if you have something more complicated? Well, here's another flow chart. Is it worth the trip? So you might ask, uh, will you spend more time in transit than at your destination? If you say no, then I don't know, maybe it's worth it. If you say yes, uh, is your trip motivated by love? As you can tell, I'm a little bit sentimental. And so if it is motivated by love, then of course it's uh, worth the time no matter what your transit time was. But if it's not, then it, and you're spending more time in transit than there, then it's probably not worth your time. This flowchart is very similar to our old one, except that instead of just branching into two options, it branches to an option that then itself branches. And what you can see in the accompanying Q&A is that we have and actually, I think I can annotate things. So let's see. You have this, um, well, that's, if you have this, uh, sorry, I had advanced there. You have this question, will you spend more time? The answers associated with that question are directly in vertical alignment with that Q. And then underneath those answers, you'll find another set of Qs indented, and the A's that are aligned with it are then associated with that question. So if we see what that looks like in our web tool, then here is that, that flow chart now with its multiple branches. So the same text we just saw, and you say, will you spend more time in transit than at your destination? I'm going to say, uh, yes. Is the trip motivated by love? Yes and then I get my answer. And you can see that what was presented to the user is based upon which option they chose, and that's just by aligning things Q's and A's uh, vertically. So if I go ahead, what if I want to get more complicated? And this one I, I really like um, as a flowchart. I before E. So is there a digraph after C? If yes, E before I. If no, is a digraph an A sound as in neighbor or way? If the answer is yes, then it's E before I. If the answer is no, then probably I before E. But there could be an exception because, as we all know, English is weird. Right? Um, so this is a flowchart, very much like the ones we've seen before. But there's not only multiple branching, but there is this reference back to the same bit of content. So in this case, the E before I. You can get to that outcome either from the first set of questions, the first question, or from the second question. So there's effectively 
a loop back to the same content. And at this point, it's important to note that next to the queues, something you may have noticed is that every time I hit Update Output, this little parenthetical gets added between the queue and the colon with numbers next to it. And that's a target that allows you to do what we're going to do here, which is point back to another question. So in this case, we had our, our first question is that I graph after C, and that has an, an answer yes and an answer no in vertical alignment with it. Under the answer yes um, is a question tag. And remember, a question tag is just a prompt back from the computer, so it doesn't actually have to be a question. And it says E before I. That's our terminal point here in the red box. But if I had answered no to is the digraph after C, I have another question, which is, is the digraph an A sound as a neighbor away? And there, the, if I answer yes, I have a question, and then I introduce the third tag um, that we're going to talk about today, which is just the go to tag. And all that is is a go to colon, and then the number that you see in these parentheticals. So in this case, I say go to 1.1, and what it does is it throws people back over to that 1.1. So if I go ahead and I look here now at um, what that's going to mean here. So here is the text from our, from our flowchart. Um, and if I say, is the digraph after C, I'm going to say no. Is the digraph a sound as a neighbor way? I'm going to say yes. And then I get to the E before I, and I get that output. So now, with just three tags, with just a Q, an A, and a go to, you now can create uh, you can bring to life any flowchart um, by just cleverly referencing back to common elements and branching out. Now, that's not the most interesting stuff. That's somewhat interesting. Um, so let's look at another flowchart. Um, and here's a, here's a good one, titling a law journal article slash note where X is a title. And so we start off, and you're, supposed to come, you're instructed to come up with a name, and then you ask, well, does X contain a pun? If the answer is yes, then go ahead, use it, because you know, a pun and a title is a great, great thing. Um, if the answer is no, well, is there any wordplay? If you have some wordplay, then you're good. If no, Latin? Uh, if so, great. If not, I mean, really, if you, you know, you're writing a self-respecting journal or article, you've got to have at least a pun, some wordplay or Latin in there. And so um, if you've answered no, it loops you back up to the new question. And so this is going to take advantage of those go-tos, but we're going to add something else here as well. And we're going to go ahead and introduce uh, the fourth tag um, that I'm going to show you today, which is an X tag. And Instead of looking at this text uh, right here and talking about it, let's see how that, this behaves in a Q&A. So, um, oh, wrong one, a lot of journal. Okay, so here's that same text uh, for our How to Title a Law Journal article. So what is your working title? I'm going to say, head in the clouds, which was, in fact, the title of, of my note. And I'm going to go ahead and answer that. Hmm, is there a pun in there? Well, I'm going to say yes. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and direct me to the final answer. Um, and it's going to say, well, actually, let's see what happens if I said, uh, uh, if I start over and if I just say stuff, and I say there isn't a pun. Well, it's going to ask me any wordplay, any Latin, and then if I say no, it'll pop me right back up to the beginning. Okay? So we can see that that loops through. But let's say I said head in the clouds, and I say yes. Well, now it's going to say, it's actually asking me this prompt, would I like to start writing? Well, I'm going to say sure, and then what it's going to do is it actually goes ahead and it sends me to a text editor with my title already there. And this um, is a, a sort of opportunity to look at the second thing that Q&A can do. 
So something I didn't say, I should have said a long time ago, is Q&A is really useful in two main use cases. One as an expert tool, which is sort of a very simple expert tool to just breathe life into um, flowcharts. And that means you, know, you come in with a very clear, distinct question that can be answered uh, with very explicit questions, and you can send people there. Um, so you can direct them. Another thing it can be used for is very simple document construction. And so let's go ahead and actually um, look at one of those examples of document construction. So here is a more complicated document construction than the uh, simple law journal title we were throwing in. It's a letter to Santa. And all the text for it is right here. And I had introduced a, a new um, tag a moment ago and didn't actually talk much about it. And that tag was the X tag. And you probably figured out what that did. That X tag, you'll notice, is lined up with the Qs, just like an A tag. Um, and it acts just like an A tag, except instead of having a, a defined um, value that you click on, it prompts you for a value. So in this case, would you like to write, write a letter for Santa? Um, if I say no, it's going to say, that's cool, have a good day. If I says yes, say yes, it's going to say, what is your name? So let's click yes. What is your name? And so I can type that in. I can say David. And it's going to say, have I been naughty or nice? I'm going to say naughty. Um, and then what I want for Christmas, I'm going to say a ball. And it's going to say, would you like to read your letter? And I'm going to say yes. And then I get this nice letter to Santa, dear Santa. It's signed with my name. Um, it apologizes for being naughty because it knows I was naughty because I told it. And it says I would like a ball for Christmas because I told it. And up here we have these instructions where I'm to proofread my letter, print it out, and mail it to Santa. And so you can see how this might be useful um, for individuals coming uh, to your website or if you're trying to triage um, some type of workflow where you could ask a bunch of questions, construct a document, and then leave some instructions for people as to what to do with that document. Um, so if I go back and I look at this and I sort of talk about what these tags mean, um, you'll see that I've introduced the fifth and final uh, tag that we're going to talk about today, which is this document tag. So we have a question and answer tag, so just Qs and As. We have an X tag, which is really a variable tag, um, which asks for a prompt. And we have this document tag. Now one thing that's important to say about that variable tag, it wouldn't make uh, much sense to ask for people's information if you couldn't put that somewhere. So when we go through and look at this, we'll see how that X tag gets used as well. So I come through, what's your name? I ask for my name. That's the only option, um, the X tag. There aren't any other options. So someone's going to have to type in their name. And then below that, you'll see another question. Have you been naughty or nice? And so we know this um, from our interaction. Have you been naughty or nice? So I'm going to say, uh, David, have you been naughty or nice? And you'll see that above that have you been naughty or nice is this doc tag. And that there you'll see the text, Dear Santa, and then you'll see these, these little sort of less than or greater than uh, bookended bits of text, BR and BR. If you know anything about web development, you'll recognize that as HTML, um, which is a markup language which is used to create uh, web pages. And so you actually can include HTML in the text of uh, Q&A, um, either in the document or actually in the, the bubbles themselves. Um, yep? I'm sorry, did someone say something? Um, so here we have Dear Santa, uh, comma, BRBR. BR. Um, and what that's doing is when the question tag, you'll notice it shares the same target ID as the question directly below it. And so when this question presents itself, this bit of text gets added to this variable, which is this document variable. And so if I then answer, have you been naughty or nice, by saying naughty, then this text, I am sorry that I have been naughty. I will work hard to be nice in the, in the new year. That bit of text gets added onto the end of this document. If I clicked nice, it wouldn't have added anything because there isn't a document tag. It would have just told me to go to what would you like for Christmas. And then after I say what would I like for Christmas, either way I'm ending up in the same place and it's saying, oh, well, here's a variable, what I want. 
And all you do for a variable is just name the variable something. And the reason that's important is because then in the document you'll see, it says, I would like, and then you use these brackets, or these sort of less than or greater than bracketed what I want. And that, if you'll remember from the letter, gets filled in with whatever the answer was. And same with my name, which is another one of the variables. And so you can see how you could, with a little practice, just take these five uh, tags, a question, an answer, a variable, and a um, go-to, and a document, and you could create really robust um, interactions for your users. And when you're done and you want to put this somewhere, all you do is you go over here to where it says, where it says output. Um, if it's a short enough thing, you actually can get a link. Um, and you could just give that link, um, although it has to be pretty short um, because we don't actually store anything in the, on the servers here. So all that information is stored in the, the URL, um, and there's a limit to how much you can do there. Um, so you can actually get um, an HTML snippet, which you can cut and paste into another HTML file, or you can get um, HTML uh, full page, which you can just save as an HTML file. So I could click Save here. And then because of my settings, you can see it's just downloading here in Chrome, and now it's an HTML file on my computer. Um, the important thing to realize is that what I just did there is I saved the output. If you're going to come back and work on something, you'll want to save this text. So you can save that markup um, by hitting Save to Markup and just save it as a, a text file. Um, or of course, you could cut and paste this into a text editor and save it and come back and use it. You can load files in here, and something um, that we're working on doing, I noticed that uh, Jessica from A2J Author was on the call. Um, I uh, saw John um, a couple months back at, a, at an event, and one of the things that I came up with an idea there was that it might be nice if there was an ability to convert between A to J author and Q&A. And I don't think that's anything that you guys are committed to doing, um, but he sent me over some, some A to J author files, and we do have a, a programmer uh, who's willing to volunteer his time who might make that so that eventually you could actually load an A to J file or export, um, save something as an A to J file. So there could be some interactivity there. And what that's really speaking to is the fact that this is an open source project. And so if you want to actually, if you have some coding background, uh, the code behind this tool is open and free to everyone as well to change and edit. And, um, and so there are some people who are interested in helping out in that respect. Um, if we um, look at some gallery examples, um, mostly this has been being used um, by local nonprofits such as Mass Legal Help to put stuff on their website. Um, uh, law students are using this a lot. Um, and some of, uh, we've had some Northeastern students, some Suffolk Law students. Um, some, there was a class at MIT last year that brought in some students from around the area. And they've been creating things like, um, you know, here's a, a personal injury uh, tool um, which helps you figure out some nuances of uh, personal injury law. Um, and so you can create these tools either for end users in the sense that our clients or for attorneys to help automate um, bits of workflow. So one of the things that, um, that I created a while back, which is uh, an internal thing, so I can't really show it to you now, but I can talk about it, was a, a Q&A that was for filing a motion to suppress. So it would walk um, new attorneys was the idea, because um, we get new, you know, about a dozen or so new attorneys a year. We're a rather large organization. Um, to help give them some scaffolding when they're starting out, uh, new attorneys could walk through a very complicated decision tree that asked them to think about all the issues in regards to a motion to suppress. And it could marry their answers um, with particular needs um, there are some reporting needs. You know, so sometimes you need a motion, uh, a memorandum of law along with your motion. Sometimes you don't, depending on whether or not there were or weren't statements. Um, and it would ask people a bunch of questions and then actually be an interactive practice guide that would say, these are things you should think about. Here's a bare bones outline of what your motion might look like. You can start from there and build upon it. So never actually fully replacing the authoring of those documents, but helping act as an interactive practice guide that does what we originally had done with the website, which is help you find a needle in a haystack out of a large bit of information. 
Um, and so all of this, everything we've talked about, there's, um, if you go to that syntax link, um, you'll find a description of each of these tags there. And so what I'm going to do is uh, I just want to show you that at that syntax link, you'll find very specific examples. Um, and those examples have live, uh, live Q&As with them. So for example, this first question one, you can see it just uh, branching. If we go down to a fun one here, uh, say Red Sox or Yankees, if someone answers Yankees, then it's going to go, seriously, Red Sox or Yankees, they say Yankees, seriously. And what you'll notice from the code here is that they've caught themselves in a little loop. So you have to answer the correct answer before it will end. And so you'll find examples all throughout um, with those bits of Q&A. And then something that you saw um, but I didn't talk a great deal about was the fact that those these answer buttons can also act as links. So, and the way you do that is by putting a bracket in between the answer and the colon, or after the colon, and with the link itself. And that actually, if you know HTML, it's actually the anchor tags h reference. And so that actually also means you can put JavaScript in there. So for some of you who might have just I have glassed over everything about that. You don't need to do anything fancy, but the point is if you know JavaScript, um, or if you think you might be interested in learning JavaScript, you can actually put some JavaScript in those buttons. And there are actually a set of built-in JavaScript functions that already exist in Q&A um, to help you do some, some powerful things. So for example, here's a really short chunk of code. Do you want to see something neat? Um, I'm going to say, Yes, I want to see something neat. And it says, hey, cool, click away. And then what you'll see inside these brackets is some JavaScript. And this save to, it's a function in JavaScript. And what that means, that's all, as you can imagine, it's all described down here in the documentation. But to just see what that does, I've got to get back to the right place. I'm going to say, well, actually, this is going to save the conversation. So that's actually not going to be as interesting because all it's going to do is download it. So let me find a more interesting example. Um, okay, so here's a more just interesting example. Here I'm using the document tag. And so would you, what would you like to cook? I'm going to say garlic chicken. Okay, I have the shopping list ready. And then what you'll notice is that everyone who got this first question, which is everyone, is going to have a document that starts with the word shopping list. If I click garlic chicken, then the ingredients for garlic chicken are going to get added to the document. If I click mac and cheese, then the ingredients for mac and cheese are added to the document. Either way, I end up at this, okay, I have the shopping list ready. How would you like it? And then you'll see there are these very simple JavaScripts that either say alert, give me the document, which is the document that we've just constructed here, or um, alert, save the document. So if I say in an alert box, You'll notice that there's just the contents of that document I just created. So you could imagine that document could be uh, a collection of items on a to-do list for someone based upon their circumstances. So you know, if this is true, add these things to the to-do list. If this is true, add these things to the to-do list. And then you could give that document to a user um, to then follow up with later to either save or print out um, or just look at. And so all of that all of those tools, all of how to do all of this, again, it's just five simple tags, a Q, an A, an X, a doc, and a go to. Um, you can get these very robust, robust um, behaviors. And so I maybe haven't, the, the, the real way to do this is to, um, is to play around. And I think the biggest testament to this is the fact that a number of people have started using this tool um, without me ever giving a presentation like this to them. Uh, they just find this page here, the syntax and usage page, sit down, and play around for about an hour. Just open up an editor. Um, and of course, one of the things that's true with these examples, you can click here to edit this Q&A in a new window. And that example will show up in a window. You can play around with it. Um, don't get fooled into thinking you can only have two possible answers. Um, you can have as many answers as, uh, as you can write A's. Um, it can become as complicated or as simple as you like. Um, if you start to make things more complicated, one of the things you might want to consider is not writing everything as a nested set of questions. Um, if you do that, you can imagine, um, so for example, 
um, you can imagine things like this where they sort of pile off and get nested off into infinity so you can't actually deal with anything reasonably. You can use the go-to method to reference questions that are back here over on the left. And of course those numbers are added in automatically by the computer. Um, so really that's sort of the first blush. Um, I'm hoping now that there are some questions or, or maybe that Rochelle would like to share some of her experience having actually worked with this. Um, and I guess we'll open up the floor. And I don't know if that's just there's there's no one there or Hi, this is Rochelle. Yeah, I just wanted to put in a plug um, to just mess around a little bit with QA. I am not a programmer, and um, it's very addictive to start using it. And we've um, started using it on the Massachusetts websites, and um, you know, it, it, we're finding that it is has, has really it's really powerful because um, what you do is you create the Q and A, and then you add it as you embed it into your website, so it works with any platform. Um, I think Kathleen has a question about um, how, to incorporate, how to integrate it with your website. You just add it, embed it right into your website from the code that, that gets generated as David showed you. Yeah, so I saw there was a, and I've just now discovered the chat window which was uh, small before. So if you had questions and I didn't answer them, I apologize for that. Um, so as far as the questions about how it integrates with websites, so you actually can take the output from this and if we go in here and actually look at an example, um, this is what the output will look like. So here I'll go ahead and click on the output. And like here is the actual output, right? Now, if it was a small enough item, you could actually just take this link and embed that, uh, share that, or embed it somehow. And so actually if it's small enough, there's this embed code, and you can just take this code and pop it into um, an HTML file. But you also can save it as a full HTML file um, and then just integrate that on your website yourself. So here for example, Rochelle, I don't know if you're doing this as a chunk of HTML in your larger page or if this is a page that's in a frame. Um, but either of those are options. Um, so it's really just what you're getting as output is just an HTML file. Um, so you can just drop it on your server or you can even actually just open it on your computer and it should work. All the interactivity is coming really from JavaScript. Um, a nice part of that means that when this is running, all of a user's choices about the decision tree are all being done client side. So what that means is that someone who's interacting with a Q&A is not actually sharing in, in any information about their interaction with the server. So for example, when we have someone on our site, answering all these questions about what's going on with them. Are they charged with a crime? Is, you know, have they had previous convictions? None of that information is transmitted back to our website. So that all happens on their device. Now, of course, if they're on a public device, um, you know, someone could come around and maybe catch some breadcrumbs on that. But if they're on their phone or something, all that information is happening there locally. Um, I saw a question about um, integration uh, with metrics. Since it's an HTML file, you actually can go in and edit the HTML file if you're using Google Analytics or something like that. You can actually drop um, your analytics code right into the HTML file. And you'll remember that I said Q&A had 10 um, uh, tags, and we only talked about five of them. I said you could ignore those first five. Those first five tags are things like header, author, description, and the, there's a before and an after tag. And what that before and after tags do actually is they allow you to throw HTML before or after your Q&A. So for example, here's, let's, let's go back to our good friend, Shall We Play a Game? Right, so here's Shall We Play a Game? You'll see that it's using a title uh, tag and a description tag. That means if I was to open it up, in its own window, it will have the title, Shall We Play a Game? And then here in the credits, it has that little description. Okay? Um, and you can turn on or off this social sharing feature. But you could just as easily have added before, and then that becomes a place where you could put in some HTML. So I'm going to use a heading 
Um, and if you, you don't know HTML, you can find a lot of resources on how to learn HTML online. But these are just, uh, again, tags. Um, and you could put a title here. I'm just going to say title. And I'm going to update it. And then what you'll see is that HTML now is incorporated into the output. So if you wanted to put in some JavaScript for tracking, you could easily just add that, uh, add that here as well. Uh, that brings up another really interesting question, which is you know, in this example, you'll notice I have these animated GIFs. Um, all those are just using HTML, just a, an image link um, to those GIFs. Something that comes up a lot um, with examples people use is they might be doing something and um, actually let's find see if I can find one that has an example. I'm trying to remember who's used an example. You might have a set of questions where uh, you're asking a bunch of questions and it's hard for the end user to understand what you mean. So you might actually what you want to do, and here let's just do it since I can't find an example. Uh, I'll do a question. Do you want to some gobbledygook word, right? And so you have an answer yes, an answer no. If I go ahead and update that, there are my options. But maybe the person doesn't know what that word means. You can go ahead and you can use HTML um, to, to give them a a link that says, hey, um, you know, we'll just send it. Right, so I'm going to just send them the Wikipedia. Um, so I'm just going to update this. And so now that is a link. And so now if someone doesn't know what that is, they can click on it. And assuming I spelled Wikipedia right, which I didn't, it would have opened up um, Wikipedia therefore, and they could just come back after they'd read up about it. Um, so I'm just going to sort of look through the, the chat here to see what we got. So metrics, you can just drop those in. It's like HTML. Um, So whether or not it's uh, your interest and impact, you want to know whether or not it's increased engagement. Um, there you could just incorporate um, other analytics tools. So one of the things we do on our website, we do some A-B testing. So we have some stuff in the background where we'll show one version to a subset of our, of our visitors and another version to an, another set. And we actually track the engagement based upon which version. And that's, that's not within Q&A specifically. That's just with, within our web platform. Um, so you could put uh, tracking on Q&A because it's just HTML, and then what in your existing analytics system, um, just see what your engagement numbers are. Um, and so that sort of leads into the next question, are we doing data studies on the percent of increased engagement? Um, we're collecting data on that. Um, we haven't dug deeply into that yet, but I imagine that at some point we will. Um, and as I said, we are doing uh, A, B, uh, studies. So we're trying to figure out what's more engaged, um, sort of normal interaction or, um, or this Q&A interaction. And I have a suspicion uh, that it's very much um, context specific. So I think we get a good deal more interaction with the Q&A um, content on mobile devices. I mean, it was really designed for that. Um, and so I think it, it does well there. Um, is there a way to make it multilingual? So, um, Yes, this, uh, so it depends, there, depends on exactly what you mean by that. Um, most of the text that you're seeing here is all user defined. So you could just as easily type the questions and the answers in, um, in another uh, language. Um, one of the things uh, that you'll notice on our website, we use Google Translate. And um, uh, so we use that to do some machine translation. Uh, that at this point sort of breaks this tool explicitly. Um, so we don't actually display the tool when we translate to another language. Um, but you could, man you know, that's because from a machine standpoint, um, it, since it's just text, it sort of sometimes messes things up. But you could manually consider translating things. Um, or if you have someone who speaks 
a language, you could just have them create a, you know, a different language version. Um, and there I think I got to, to the end of the questions I saw in the chat box. Um, were there any other questions? I, I, we have this time. I, I sort of zoomed through things. I know it's like drinking from a fire hose. Um, but the thing that I would really say is hopefully what I've done is spark your interest. Um, I don't anticipate that anyone's leaving here today now ready to do everything. You probably thought, oh my goodness, he went so fast and this and that and things I know. Indenting things is important and there are Q's and there are A's and uh, how does that all fit together? Um, hopefully, I've, I've done enough to spark your interest that you can go and take your own time um, to sit down. We have this quick start guide that's available off the syntax page that takes all of the uh, flowcharts that we went over and, and explicitly walk through and talks, uh, talk through what I gave in the presentation. And, and then really the key is this, this syntax um, with these live examples um, because you're really, really not going to learn anything any better than by doing it. And the great thing is you can just play around with it. Um, I mean, the other key thing is to understand that as far as a tool goes, um, you know, this is good at taking flowcharts and bringing them to life. Um, but not every flowchart was meant to be brought to life in this way. So you know, sometimes we use flowcharts or decision trees, and the important thing is that they help us see the relationships between one branch and another. When you interact with the decision tree in this manner, it's very narrow. You just follow your path and you go down and you don't see what the other paths are. Um, and so if that's what you're really looking for, if you have something in a decision tree format, and that's why it was in a decision tree format, that is that sort of broader view, then you lose that here. What this is really good is, as I talked about before, sort of the needle in a haystack problem. Uh, you know, it's like playing 20 questions. You can ask 20 questions and very often get down to a very specific thing out of the entire universe of things in the world um, just by asking the right questions. And so in the same way, you can help direct people to the content they need, whether that be a, a, a would-be client or, or, a, um, or an attorney working for you or someone else in your organization, you know, you know, maybe a, a paraprofessional helping to triage uh, cases or get someone somewhere, or you know, um, something like that. Looks like we've got two questions here. Uh, the first of which is, are there uh, um, are the built-in JavaScript functions the only ones supported, or can you use others? So you can, it, it really, the output ends up just being HTML, so you can add whatever JavaScript functions you want to. So if you know JavaScript, you can, you know, just sort of as I was showing here, uh, you can just type in before, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, let's see, this is always the, it's fun to try these things on their own. So I'm just going to do an alert function. Say, hey, I don't know if that will trigger when it loads. Let's see. And I probably won't. I probably need to do something with it. Um, but you could add, you could just add in a, a JavaScript function here, and you could call it um, from anywhere else in there. Um, so as we talked about, these A's, so let's look at this very explicitly. So here's a very simple, you know, this or that, this, that. Um, you can turn those A's and you can turn them into, you know, and if, where you put the brackets um, decides whether or not it loads on the page you're on or opens a new window. So if I actually put the brackets outside of um, the colon, it loads a new window. So if I just send people, say, to Google. So this is going to get go Google, or actually here, let's, let's Google or Bing, right? So the first option we'll do Google. Second option we'll do Bing. Okay, so I'm going to reload that. So now I've got Google or Bing. I click Google. It opens up Google for me. And of course, I told it not to do anything after that. So if I come back to it, it's it's now just sort of uh, empty, but if I hit Bing, then I get the Bing, and again, I didn't tell it to do anything, so it just went back. I could have, underneath that, I could have been clever, and I could have um, had it go back to one 
when it was done that way. Um, except I have to do that in a, in a Q tag. And there's, there, there's helpful error messages. So I say Google or Bing, Google, send me to Google. Now I come back here and you can see it got me back to the beginning. Um, but it, as far as JavaScript goes, this is a, an href and HTML is all it's putting that into. So I could, I could in here instead of Google, or let's say I'm not feeling Bing friendly, I could you know, put in a JavaScript. You know, put in a little alert. So there's a little JavaScript if you know JavaScript. And now if I click on Bing, I get this alert. It says, really? And it actually didn't send me there. So yeah, you can integrate whatever JavaScript you want. It's just, the output's just HTML. Um, it's integrated in here. I like to see, I think of this as sort of the gateway drug for programming and attorneys. Um, you can play around, just use those five tags and do very nice work. But if you're interested, you learn a little JavaScript and you can make it sing and dance and do pirouettes and all sorts of stuff. Um, so the next question is, um, how or can you track specific answers that individuals are giving to the to questions? So it depends on what you mean by track. Um, one of the built-in JavaScript functions is a, a submit. Uh, submit function. And so if you're used to using HTML um, forms, uh, basically this is allow it turns Q&A markup into a form. So you can actually take the answers that people created and you can have it submit it to a form. In fact, when we saw the letter to Santa example, that was using this function. So the, the text editor that you saw at the end of that example is just an editor that takes in, you pass it an HTML uh, blob of text and it throws it in that editor. Um, that was done by us just submitting it. So if you had the facility to accept web form submissions, and that is you had someone who actually um, was used to, to working with creating web forms, uh, you could actually just make this the, the skin to that and pass information there. So in that respect, yes, you can track the individual answers and then get them somewhere. But one of the other things you can do is you can, so for example, one of these other JavaScript functions is a um, transcript. And that actually will just be a transcript of the conversation that you had, the Q&A, the questions, and the answers. And so you could actually, you could roll that transcript function uh, with either this you know, save to function, which would save to a file, or the submit function, or actually this mail to function, which works really well on phones, but not everyone's computers, because not everyone has a default uh, email set up on their computer's email program. But you could actually just take that transcript, put it into your output, and then when you pass the output on, there's a transcript of all the questions. The submit to action actually allows you to, to submit individual things as form elements. Um, so I guess the answer is yes. It's, the answer is yes. Do we have five different options as to how to keep track of the question? Um, um, so Rochelle, sorry, oh, Brian, I just wanted to ask Ed one more thing um, about how um, about how we're thinking about this in Massachusetts. I think one of the things that I haven't gotten anywhere beyond the first five tags <laughs> that David <laughs> mentioned, and even using those first five tags, are able to do very nimble, quick creations. So um, we found it useful when things come up that maybe you don't want to divest, invest a huge amount of time really developing and perfecting um, an expert Q&A type thing, but it's something that you're going to use quickly. For example, in Massachusetts, there were some changes, uh, uh, short-term changes in how certain mass health, um, who was eligible for mass health. And so we built a very quick Q&A, which was just on our website for a few weeks. But because the investment was pretty, uh, wasn't very high, it, it, you know, that worked well for us. Uh, but I also wanted to mention that this Q&A uh, students, even students who aren't programmers, are really able to grasp this Q&A um, pretty quickly. And so it is a way you might, if you have volunteers, um, 
that might, you know, you might be able to work with volunteers to implement some of these Q and A's. And actually, there is a class at Suffolk that Gabe Tenenbaum runs, and um, where he's having students do Q and A's for legal services programs. So, if you have something more complex in mind, um, I think he's he's at the point where he's soliciting um, projects as well. So, some other resources for it. Yeah, and I think they did a nice one where um, where some of the uh, changes around immigration policy, they were able to sort of put in a Q&A to help triage people to help them understand whether or not they should be applying for some type of status under the, the, the new sort of dreamer light um, arrangements under the executive. And yeah, and that's really the key here is that it's, it's not a, it's, it is not a tool that does everything for everyone. It's a very simple, very lightweight tool that helps breathe life into decision trees. And it does so in a way that you can then come back and quickly change them. I mean, the reason why we built this language be was because we knew as attorneys, we would argue incessantly over this decision tree for our end users, right? It's like, well, what questions should we ask them first? And what if this changes or that changes? And we wanted to be able to quickly change it without having to go back to IT and say, can you rewrite everything for us? All you got to do is just change the text, change a little of the logic, and then there you go. Um, so how, how accessible is this with uh, screen readers? Do you screen readers see it or skip over it? Or? So everything is embedded as HTML text. So um, I haven't done extensive, um, uh, extensive user testing with screen readers, but it should show up just as any other text would. Um, so that, yeah, so it should present um, as a, as a normal website would. That was something that was very important to us was that we wanted the text to be actual text in the browser um, so that it would be visible to things like screen readers. That being yeah. said, um, the question about multilingual before, um, someone has um, noted that there is a character encoding issue. So some characters um, with accents don't show up appropriately, and that's something that we'll work on in the future, which is a good time to point out that this is, a, this is an active development. So right now we're not devoting as much re resources to it as we were before because it's sort of doing what we need it to do and we only can devote resources for something that's you know, mission critical for us. But that being said, there is some stuff on the line that we may add some stuff to it because we have some other uses for it. Um, like one of the big requests is a back button, so we'll probably add that soon. But, um, one of the things you should note is that on the home page there, on that tool page, there's a little report bug slash issue. And so all of this, if you're familiar with GitHub, all of the code is up on GitHub. And you actually can report an issue there, and that way we'll know about it and maybe get to it, or maybe someone else can get to it. Um, and so, uh, so yeah, it is an active development. If you find something and it doesn't work, let us know because maybe we can fix it um, or maybe someone else can fix it. Um, I mean, this really is in the, the spirit of open source software and, and sharing, and you know, with enough eyes, all bugs are shallow, which is a, which is a saying among programmers. Well, uh, I just wanted to let people know that there's a survey in the chat window. Um, if people could take a moment and give us some feedback over this. Uh, this it's been a great presentation here, and I greatly appreciate it. If there's any more questions, um, we've got a few more minutes here, but I want to uh, thank you, David, for doing this presentation. I definitely learned a lot. Well, thank you. And when you come up with new ideas, don't just tell us you know, the things that aren't working so we can fix them, but when you come up with a great example, let us know and we'll put it on the gallery page. Or actually, the way GitHub works, you can put it on the gallery page um, and you can, can share that. Um, to say some of the stuff that was mentioned earlier, there are people who are using this now uh, in a in law school settings. So for example, just last spring, Suffolk Law, one of their sort of law and tech student groups did a, a little hackathon where they actually invited students to create, um, create Q&As for use by people. And some of them worked with, uh, with agencies to say, oh, what do you need? And came up with solutions based upon their need. So that goes back to the idea that this might be something you could could introduce to a population and say, hey guys, can you guys help me come up with a solution? But I, that being said, I think anyone on this call um, would be able to just to sit down. And I really encourage you, sit down with it for you know, 30 minutes, an hour, go to that syntax page, and just play around. Because um, I mean, you know, it's just fun.
right? Well, thank you everyone who has come out here. If you have any questions about this, please feel free to email. We're happy to do research and help people out also.